Welcome to True Crime 101 with Murder Friends, the podcast where three friends from three different countries talk about murder. My name's Hannah and I'm British. I'm Anna and I'm American. I'm Alana and I'm Canadian. In addition to our longer episodes, True Crime 101 talks you through key true crime cases and theories. So did you know that Paul McCartney died in 1966 and has a body double? I did not. Or okay. really that the Beatles never existed? I'm sorry, what? Ready? Mm-hmm. Birds aren't real, the world's flat, the queen's a lizard, the earth is hollow and planes leave chemtrails that are poisoning us, Katy Perry is John Bonnet Ramsey, the Hadron Collider could open a portal to hell if it hasn't already done so, Prince Charles is a vampire, Pokemon Go is a government intelligence and surveillance app, Tupac faked his death and is still alive, as did Elvis, Stevie Wonder isn't blind, the US government can control the weather, Big Pharma has a cure for cancer but won't tell us, Emily Bronte's brother actually wrote Wuthering Heights. We're living in a simulation. Historical dates are altered by the Pope. 9-11 was a controlled demolition. One day is actually four days happening all at once. The author of Alice in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll, was actually Jack the Ripper. And the moon landings were faked. And the film of the landing was directed by Stanley Kubrick. But the moon doesn't actually exist, so not sure about that one. Michael Jackson is actually LaToya Jackson. The CIA created HIV and AIDS. Aliens built Stonehenge. Sir Francis Bacon actually wrote some of Shakespeare's plays. JFK's assassination was an inside job. Denver International Airport is the hub for the Illuminati. And Disney's Frozen was named Frozen to frustrate people looking for information about Walt Disney himself being cryogenically frozen. And Finland doesn't exist. I really <laughs> like to talk about conspiracy theories this week. Oh my I'm really glad God. that was like... What if it was just like, I would just like to talk to you about things that I really believe in, like I'm passionate about (laughs) today. I never said that I don't believe in it. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) Amazing. I'm also really impressed that I managed to get through all of that without majorly fucking up. So That's incredible. Good Good job, me. Uh, So before we get going, my sources came from the BBC, Popular Mechanics, Psychology Today, Time, Vulture, Reader's Digest and Wikipedia, which I'm aware that is a list almost as long as the conspiracy theory list I just read out Um, and as always full sources will be on the website with all the links so we're going to talk about conspiracy theories this week excellent I am genuinely so excited I have been waiting brilliant (laughs) so you both know that conspiracy theories are probably one of my favorite things yes and you both know I have a list of conspiracy theories on my phone yes Yes. it's come out on multiple occasions especially after a few (laughs) sherry's (laughs) <laughs> there is <laughs> I like like the first time we met I like whipped it out and you looked at me like I was a fucking nutter which, you're you know, like it's alright these are my people they'll, they'll be like, fine with this I was like look what I've got <laughs> so it's I want to make it clear from the outside because I don't really feel like I have made it clear yet that I don't believe in them but I've always been fascinated in why people believe in them and I'm always fascinated in the variety and depth of them because there are so many and some of them make no sense but then some of them do make sense So um, before we get going with that, we'll start off with some definitions. So the Oxford English Dictionary's definition of conspiracy theory is, quote, the theory that an event or a phenomenon occurs as a result of a conspiracy between interested parties. So that could be specifically a belief that some covert but influential agency, typically political in motivation and oppressive in its intent, is responsible for an unexplained event. So the phrase conspiracy theory was first used in the American Historical Review in 1909, although it's believed that the phrase could have been used since the early 19th century. But it only really became commonplace and like well used in the mid-1960s. There are different types of conspiracy theory, and a good example of the different types come from Jesse Walker's 2013 work called The United States of Paranoia, Um, a conspiracy theory and he identified five types of conspiracy theory so every time you hear a conspiracy theory you should be able to jam it into one of these five boxes so the first one is called the enemy outside and that's a theory based on people from outside of a group scheming to affect those within that group Um, the next is the enemy within which is conspirators who are indistinguishable from everyday and ordinary citizens so the people who like walk among us The enemy above, so that's powerful people manipulating their surroundings for their own personal and collective gain, which is, I think is probably the most common one, Mm, like governments and the powerful rich elite. The fourth one is the enemy below, which is the 
less powerful or the lower class. I put, there's no real nice way of putting it, but I put lower class people seeking to flip social order. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then um, the fifth one is the benevolent conspiracy, which is angelic forces seeking to help people and improve the world. So not all conspiracy theories are necessarily evil or oppress- oppressive in intent. So that's what that fifth one covers. Basically, it boils down to the outsiders, the insiders, the powerful, the not powerful, and the benevolent. Five types. Got it. So why do people believe in them? Conspiracy theories really used to be the kind of preserve of um, those is on the fringes of society. But recently, they've become more commonplace. And perhaps we can attribute that to it being exacerbated by people like, I don't know, a certain president who looks like a what's it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, it's no news that the invention of the internet has assisted the spread of misinformation. And in fact, misinformation has never been so easily accessible. University of London professor Chris French notes that conspiracy theories aren't the preserve of middle-aged men living in their mother's basements anymore, but rather the data that exists on who believes in them or not glides right across like social class age and gender I feel like a lot more people believe in them now Mm. or are willing to talk about them than you know previously really used to be the case and he and many others theorize that the reason why people believe in them is it mainly because people naturally enjoy order and patterns and things that are regular in nature like we are huge creatures of habits and we really like routine it's just what human beings like if you think about how frustrated you become when something doesn't work that should work and a skype camera (laughs) the tv remote you know like or like a road diversion or a cancelled flight and you just get furious because it's like out of out of a pattern or out of a regularity because we like order and we like patterns and we like regularity so much that if something's altered even like a tiny bit we kind of really easily pick up on it and we really easily recognise it. And sometimes we overthink why that's happened. So often we overthink it into having a significance when realistically there probably isn't any. Mm. Like yeah. if the remote's not working, it's like it's a government conspiracy that the remote's not working. Sky doesn't want to let me watch another true crime documentary. <laughs> when realistically my batteries are going because I've been watching Sky Crime too much. <laughs> it's that kind of thing. We also question why it's happened. And you know what happens when you have a question, you always want an answer and you want that answer quickly and you want that answer to satisfy you. So sometimes that answer isn't true, but that sometimes that answer, that's the only answer that's available. And sometimes the answer is that someone or something made something happen. And to make this worse, as if that wasn't already frustrating for us as human beings, we also, if everyone thinks they're a good person. So we also struggle with how we understand how bad or tragic things happen. So it's hard for us to believe that someone could walk into a school with a gun or fly a plane into a building or kill someone in the street without there being a higher power above them ordering them for that to happen. So uncertainty is a really unpleasant state for our a really unpleasant state for our little monkey brains. <laughs> we don't handle it well. We just don't. So conspiracy theories kind of give you that sense of understanding and a comforting certainty. We all have like this inbuilt desire to maintain a positive self-image as well. So most people achieve that through work, family, friends, hobbies, groups they participate in. But some people can't or don't engage in those kinds of things so they feel excluded. Conspiracy theories sometimes therefore offer a community of their own where people who believe in them can feel welcome bolstering this positive self-image if you think about um like the flat earth society Mm, yeah think how big a community that is and you know when you go in there and you say oh i believe the world's flat and everyone goes yeah no you're right it makes you feel welcome yeah i i don't know i'm not a member (laughs) or am i (laughs) oh Oh, god (laughs) If you know what to get me to Christmas, it's a Flat Earth Society membership. Because <laughs> I just want to go happening. in there and wreak havoc. I actually uh, know somebody. I don't know them. <laughs> I know a, it's like second removed person who actually full on goes to conventions and believes it. Fuck off. Oh, really? We should have them on the podcast. Yeah. I just don't, I don't understand it. No, that, mm. I really can't wrap my head around that one. 
Okay, a lot of them, but that one specifically, I'm like... That one, yeah. <laughs> like, number one. I mean, yeah. there's things that you can do to prove or disprove that conspiracy theory. You know, some of the other ones, it's like you'd have no idea, but hmm. that one is very... Um, God, yeah, I'm, come I'm on just, now. Yeah. There's a lot of science available. There's a lot of science going on there. I mean, obviously, yeah. Ted Cruz is the Zodiac Killer, but besides that, like, the Flat Earth is definitely, definitely number one. Yeah. I don't know, I think Ted Cruz is probably yeah. above Flat Earth. Probably. I know. I know the timelines don't match up, but no, I no, 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 not even remotely. That. But I don't care <laughs> yeah. because no, I yeah. refuse to believe that. <laughs> I refuse. So we've pretty much gone through the three reasons that research concludes why people believe in conspiracy theories, and that's a desire for understanding and certainty, a desire for control and security, and a desire to maintain a positive self-image. But we have to kind of question whether conspiracy theories actually satisfy those desires. I mean, obviously, there's huge amounts of research that's been done on this and one in particular that involved college students involved two um, conspiracy theories and they ended up showing higher levels of insecurity but as a group that had little motivation to believe in them in the first place we can't really rely on that as sort of heavy evidence. There are real world effects to conspiracy theories as well. Um, Viren Swamy who's a social psychology professor is quoted as saying it's increasingly becoming clear that lots and lots of people believe in them and they have negative outcomes. We can only really look at the massive measles outbreak that clearly stemmed from a dangerous, very, well, a very dangerous misbelief that vaccines cause autism. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And the fact that people still believe that when it's been disproven so many times by science. Yeah. Like proper independent science. So something else that really bolsters the appeal of conspiracy theories is that there is always a tiny possibility that they could be true. Yeah. One of the most well-known of these is MK Ultra. Mm, yeah. Do you guys know much about that? It was the CIA were testing hallucinogenic drugs, um, including LSD, on people in these like top-secret experiments. And what they were trying to do is modify the behaviour of people using them. And it was this kind of conspiracy theory that the CIA were doing this and it was all like, oh, but are they going to use it for, like, soldiers and warfare and stuff? And people were, like, really, really into it and really, like, scared it was going to happen. And it turned out to be a real program. Oh, yeah. The CIA were doing it. <laughs> I think there there was a... Netflix, like, actually did, like, a documentary or show about it as well. Oh, was that with Worm the guy something? Who... Wormwood. Wormwood. Was it Wormwood? Yeah, I think... I could have made that up. I don't know. <laughs> I <could've> made... <laughs> yes. It's sharing words with each other now, aren't <laughs> It's kind of like that idea of there's a kernel of truth in things or, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. So if this conspiracy theory, like, it had to have started somehow, right? There had to have been, like, something. So then you think, well, maybe there is something, like, at the base of it. Like, maybe the the, the whole thing isn't particularly true, but there's something that started it that was true. Definitely. If you had to pick a favorite conspiracy theory that you it either what is your A your favorite and B one that you could most likely get on board with? The moon's not real. That's your favorite. It's my favorite because it's so bollocks. Because you can literally see it. You can literally like, <laughs> oh, look out of here. <laughs> you can literally see it with your eyes. Yeah. But you know, it could be a hologram. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Like who keeps the hologram going day on day on day? Yeah, but the moon's been around for like a really long time. I know. Yeah. It didn't just, like, appear in, like, 1965 or something. And, hey, guys. <laughs> once, <laughs> once we got, like, projector science, once, yeah. once we figured out how to projectors work. <laughs> this is just done with mirrors and smoke yeah, in, the, in the dark ages. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Fair Do you have um, a favorite conspiracy theory or... I always like the one um, about like lizard people under the ground and like lizard people are running the world or whatever. And the, I'm not sure if it's fully that they live underground or they just walk among us and they like control society or something. Just the idea of lizard people really makes me happy. Yeah, apparently the queen's a lizard, isn't she? Oh, yeah. And also um, Theresa May. Potentially I could definitely lizard. see Theresa May. I don't know why. <laughs> unzipping her skin suit at night. Yeah. I don't know. I, I totally <laughs> well, did you see her that. dance like on that one show? Oh, yeah, that, that was not a human. Yeah, what, what was that? I it was... think it's just, she says that like that thing where she, that person was like, "Oh, what was the um, the naughtiest thing you've done?" She was like, "Oh, I ran through a cornfield or something like that," and it was like, "Okay, what, that was that, the... that was her answer." 
I mean, maybe that's illegal if you're a lizard, but like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but don't you know lizards are allergic to corn? I don't know. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. Exactly. I don't know. It was what... so dangerous. It was so dangerous for her. Was she I naked? Know. I don't want to know that. I really don't want to know, know that. But like, give me something here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I sort of like the aliens in Stonehenge. Mm. Yeah. I kind of, I could believe that. I don't know. I've been watching Lost in Space lately with my daughter. So I'm like really into like <laughs> aliens and like being lost in space at the moment and the different planets. But um, yeah, because, well, I mean, I think we've all seen it. You've, you guys have all, well, at least driven by it because anytime you go to Devon, you drive by yeah. it, don't you? Mm. Yeah, we from used where to, we um, when we used to go on family holidays, we used to drive to like Cornwall or Wales from Kent. And um, we used to stop there for like breakfast because we used to leave like really, really, really early and stop there for breakfast. And that's when you used to be able to like go right up to it. So you used oh, to be yeah. able to like basically sit underneath it and like mm. eat breakfast, which was pretty cool. But like now, I think you're not, I don't think you're allowed to get that close to it now. No, no they have got a huge fence. Mm. It, it always annoys me because the traffic slows down around it because you can see it from the road. It's just like, yeah. could you just put up a wall because then the traffic jams for like ages <laughs> and then it clears as soon as you go past it. It's like, oh. And it's really small from the road as well, isn't it? It's, it's so like, tiny. I know it's really sad, but it's the A303 and yeah. it's like the road that we drive along to get to Glastonbury and it's like the <laughs> shittest road. It is. In in the country. Well, it's not that shit, but it's awful. But every time we drive to Glastonbury, everyone's just like slowing down. And it's yeah, like, to look at it. Drive faster. <laughs> My husband's cousin had like a moon marriage or something there. Oh, all right. Like at daybreak wow. or whatever. I, mean, I don't know. The whole thing. And they slept there in a tent and then got – it was really funny though because this cousin's brother, when I was hearing the story, was like, it was the most bollocks thing I've ever had to do in my life because it was like <laughs> – it was hilarious. He was like ragging on a part. But they're kind of really into that sort of thing. So for them it was ideal, I guess. But anyway, um, yeah, I like the idea of – the aliens did it. Aliens in Stonehenge. Yeah, yeah I find, sure. like, I, I don't know if you know this, but I have all the seasons of the X-Files on DVD at my parents' house. Hell yeah. And you get into an X-Files binge and you start thinking a whole lot of shit is real. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I love I love that. X-Files. So good. That's great. I actually never watched it because I remember it was out, but it just... A bit scary to me when I was younger. Mm. It was like, yeah, I was and younger. Then, it was scary. Like my sister used to love it, and she used to, um, she used to tape it off the TV on VHS. Oh yes, do you remember and those days, then, Alana? Yeah. Did you have those Ugh. days? Um, oh somewhere. god. Oh my. God. I mean, I have. <laughs> okay, I didn't watch X Files when it was on TV because I was too young. But yeah, you in, I had a period really in high school where I, um, you know. Uh, Blockbuster used to sell like DVDs and stuff. Yeah, mm. I think I, I ended up buying like all the seasons from Blockbuster, and they should still be at my parents' house unless they threw them out, which will cause a, an issue. But yeah, <laughs> I, <laughs> where are my X Files DVDs? Like, where did you put my fucking X Files? This is not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Go into like a full teenage meltdown. Over yeah, it. yeah, please. Like, it's not like slamming doors and things. Oh, amazing, amazing. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know. There's something. I mean, I I love I love X Files as a show. I will always love it. Even the really corny, like especially the early episodes. They actually used to film it in Canada because it was way cheaper, and they didn't really have a big budget. <laughs> but um, there's something about like really late at night, you know, sitting in my parents' basement watching X Files. And it's like, you know, the government is in control of, like, all this stuff and there's aliens. And it's like, yeah, man, like, yes, I, be- I believe. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because it had, like, the smoking man in it. Yes. And he was, like, the the person you think is, like, pulling the strings. But, yeah, no, you're right, 100%. I think, I think as well, too, so like, I th- at least for me, I think of the sort of original conspiracy theories were like primarily alien based. I don't know why oh, yeah. I feel like mm. that, but I just feel like they kind of the big ones started at like Area 51. Um, you know, the go- the government has alien technology and they're not telling us about it. You know, oh, um, Roswell. Roswell, the crash yeah. and everything. Oh, Roswell, yes. And so those were kind of like the big sort of at least in my opinion, the first real big ones. But now you've got so many, you know, the earth is flat, lizard yeah. people, Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Like, there's hey, so many different... I think that's, like, that's, definitely, that's definitely more of a meme than yeah, a, more than of a, a meme. conspiracy theory. 
But they're, I feel like they've branched off. And maybe now because we have the internet and we can talk shit way easier, it, it just feels like there's so many more different varieties of conspiracy theories rather than just aliens and the government. Yeah, and I feel like some of them, when you look at them, you think that has to be a joke. But then you actually like dive into them a little bit more and you people actually believe them. And there's one yeah. which is birds aren't real. Yeah, like how did how did that start? How did that yeah. come about? And it's just, it basically they they believe that Ronald Reagan killed all the birds and replaced them with basically. What does Ronald Reagan have to do with this? Like, because Ronald Reagan did it. That's why. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> of course, he was the president at the time, and he okay, it. all right. <laughs> and um, they replaced all the birds with. I went. I've been on so many deep dives, and I'm so sorry, but they replaced all the birds with like robot drone things, effectively. And birds are surveillance agents, like surveillance. So they they collect surveillance, mm. and I just think that is that's next level. Yeah, yeah. Bullshit. Like if someone <laughs> came up to you and said that to your face, like they, you know, you're on a coffee date and they say that birds are drones. Like, how do you handle that? <laughs> like, what is your response? Like, oh, oh, I have the perfect response to any of these. So do you know when people say like, "Oh, the moon landings were faked," all you have to do is turn around and say, "Yeah." If you believe the moon's real, <laughs> <laughs> all you all you have to do is one up, one up the crazy, one up, mm. yeah. So it's that is like, definitely that's like one of those. Uh, yeah, if you you know when you're just like having a conversation with somebody and then somebody comes out with that, like yeah, like actually you know there's something flat, nuts, like, yeah. You do it. What do you do? It's like the and I only because I saw this level up. <laughs> yeah recent thing and it was like imagine being with somebody for and being in love with somebody and then realize they say valentine's day <laughs> <laughs> and i was like oh that's so yeah wow i saw one of those the other day and it was just like imagine falling in love with someone and moving in and the first thing they do is put up a live laugh love oh my god, oh god. <laughs> um wooden <laughs> handwritten sign and i was like oh, oh no my. no 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 it's one thing that you like to have a little uh, a deep dive on aliens. Okay, I've been there. I understand you. You know, you are one of my people. But it's another thing to be like, yeah, the, the moon doesn't exist. It's a projection from God knows where. Like, I think maybe in my mind, there's like a there's different levels of conspiracy theories. There's the funny ones. There's the ones where like, ooh, I think you need to get checked out. And then there's the other ones. It's like, <laughs> girl, what is going on in your life? Oh, yeah. What happened to you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was really good. Well done. I thought you'd enjoy my uh, my love of conspiracy theories, but I'd be really interested to know in what other people's con- favorite conspiracy theory is. Yes, please yeah, send them to us. Tell us, because there's got, there's got to be more than my great list that I came up with at the beginning, <laughs> which, I, I, to be honest with you, I copied and pasted off my phone. It was already written. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you just took your list and... Yeah, I mean, it was like half of my, it was half of what I said, really. It was great. So, Amazing. Yeah, all of the sources would be on our website as well. If I didn't say that earlier, but I think I did. So, well, email us or contact us through social media with your favorite conspiracy theory, or if there's anyone that we didn't mention today, and you should definitely let us know about. You can email us at murderfriendspod at gmail dot com. Twitter is Murder Friends PD or Instagram Murder Friends Pod. And please check out our website, murderfriends.com. Um, check out our blog. And also, you can see, like Hannah said, all of our sources are there. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. The moon's not real. <laughs> <laughs>